In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the peace of the Lord be with you always. My brothers and sisters, as we gather together in prayer, in heart, mind, and especially spirit, we interrupt the sober uh, reflectiveness of the season of Lent by celebrating this day with great joy, the solemnity of Joseph, the spouse of Mary. And so we begin our prayer by placing ourselves in the presence of our God, who calls us to renew our commitment to live as faithful caretakers of those whom God entrusts to us. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come again in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that by St. Joseph's intercession, your church may constantly watch over, the, watch over those, the unfolding of the mysteries of human salvation, whose beginning you entrust to, this, to his faithful care. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Samuel. The Lord spoke to Nathan and said, Go, tell my servant David, when your time comes and you rest with your ancestors, I will raise up your heir after you, sprung from your loins, and I will make his kingdom firm. It is he who shall build a house for my name, and I will make his royal throne firm forever. I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. Your house and your kingdom shall endure forever before me. Your throne shall stand firm forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. The response is, the son of David will live forever. The son of David will live forever. The promises of the Lord I will sing forever. Through all generations my mouth shall proclaim your faithfulness. For you have said, my kindness is established forever. In heaven you have confirmed your faithfulness. The son of David will live forever. I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to David my servant. Forever will I confirm your posterity and establish your throne for all generations. The son of David will live forever. He shall say of me, you are my father, my God, the rock, my savior. Forever I will maintain my kindness toward him and my covenant with him stands firm. The son of David will live forever. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, it was not through the law that the promise was made to Abraham and his descendants that he would inherit the world, but through the righteousness that comes from faith. For this reason, it depends on faith, so that it may be a gift. 
and the promise may be guaranteed to all his descendants, not to those only who adhere to the law, but to those who follow the faith of Abraham, who is the father of all of us, as it is written, I have made you father of many nations. He is our father in the sight of God, in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into being what does not exist. He believed, hoping against hope, that he would become the father of many nations. According to what was said, thus shall your descendants be. That is why it was credited to him as righteousness. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed are those who dwell in your house, O Lord. They never cease to praise you. Glory, Glory and, and praise, praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. And with your A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jacob was the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary. Of her was born Jesus, who is called the Christ. Now this is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. When his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found with child through the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, since he was a righteous man, yet unwilling to expose her to shame, decided to divorce her quietly. Such was his intention, when behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, into your home. For it is through the Holy Spirit that the child has been conceived in her. She shall bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. When Joseph awoke, he did as the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took his wife into his home. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So as the reality of the coronavirus has continued to dominate the thoughts and concerns of our lives, we very quickly uh, have become familiar with a variety of terms and language that we never heard of or used before. We now are familiar with a word like coronavirus or COVID-19 or flatten the curve or social distancing. The list goes on. And among those terms uh, that we hear a bit more uh, even recently still uh, is the acronym PPE, uh, Personal Protective Equipment. Uh, it is recognized that those who are first responders in the medical field and in other uh, roles, they need to be protected from that which they are trying to give care and attention to for those who are patients. And the challenge is to make sure that there's enough PPEs around for all of our healthcare professionals uh, to use. And it seems very fitting uh, as church, we celebrate today the Feast of uh, the Solemnity of St. Joseph, because one of the significant roles that Joseph plays, and we hear it in today's text, is exactly that of a protector. Uh, first, uh, as a righteous man, Joseph is committed to not placing Mary uh, in any position of shame. Uh, the social and religious custom of the ancient world in which Mary and Joseph uh, lived uh, in Jewish tradition included kind of a two-step process for uh, the marriage uh, arrangement. The first step was betrothal, where they were legally understood to be a legitimate husband and wife. Yet, there was typically a period of time, sometimes up to a year, before a legitimately married husband and wife would actually come and live together. And um, if there was uh, an infidelity in that period of time, then it would be pretty common for a uh, husband to uh, make kind of a big deal about um, a decree of divorce. Uh, we don't know what Joseph's thoughts were uh, exactly about how this uh, pregnancy came to be, 
but uh, he's not willing to put her out there for ridicule or to shame. Uh, he really is, by instinct, wanting to protect her. That's at the first part of the story. Uh, later, as the, continue, as the story unfolds, he takes her into his home. Um, he's going to care for her. He's going to care for this child. Uh, his interest is not a self-interest, but it's ordered and directed to Mary's well-being and to the well-being and welfare of this child who is to be born. And as well as a kind of uh, cherry on top of the, the ice cream, um, the angel directs Joseph, you are to name him Jesus. Um, in the ancient world and still today, there is responsibility associated with placing a name on anything, but especially a name on a person. That name will identify and mark that person for the rest of their lives. And this is a responsibility that is given to Joseph. You are to name him Jesus. And Joseph does. He accepts the responsibility that God places on his shoulders. And he will love and care and protect this household, even though it is far outside any expectation that he may have had. Taken together, uh, the Feast of Joseph, spouse of Mary, in the context of the season of Lent uh, and in the larger social context in which we live these days is a wonderful and powerful encouragement and a reminder that always, not only in times of crisis, God calls each of us to be protectors, personal protective uh, equipment, if you will, for the continued growth, development, and salvation of each other as people God has created and called to be his own. And so as we celebrate with great joy and gladness the faithfulness and the steadfastness with which Joseph fulfilled his role, we pray that we not only admire him, but follow his example in renewing our commitment today to be personal protectors of those that God entrusts to our care. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us, men, and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With faith and confident trust in God's all-powerful love, we entrust our prayers as we respond, Lord, hear our prayer. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, may the Lord bless him, sustain him, and protect him from all evil. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For lawmakers, may the God of justice guide them in living out their duty with wisdom and a sense of service to all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are on the fringes of society, may the Lord provide for the acceptance and help that they need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For members of our community of faith, 
May the Holy Spirit enkindle in us a more pure love for our neighbor. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, may they live forever in joy in the kingdom of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Cap, Ernie, and Larry Cassessa, whom we remember at this Mass, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and loving God, hear us as we pray. We give you thanks and praise for the gift, the witness, the service of your faithful son, Joseph. Help us to imitate his protective care with those you entrust to our lives as we look forward to the return of your son to us in glory. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. We pray, O Lord, that just as St. Joseph served with loving care your only begotten Son, born of the Virgin Mary, so we may be worthy to minister with a pure heart at your altar, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, and on the solemnity of Saint Joseph, to give you fitting praise, to glorify you, and bless you. For this just man was given by you as spouse to the Virgin Mother of God and set as a wise and faithful servant in charge of your household to watch like a father over your only begotten Son who was conceived by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore and powers tremble before you, Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Defend with unfailing protection, O Lord, we pray, the family you have nourished with the food from this altar as they rejoice at the solemnity of St. Joseph and graciously keep safe your gifts among, among them. Through Christ our Lord, amen. We conclude our prayer this morning. Uh, another word of uh, uh, thanks that you're able to join with us, albeit not physically present, but spiritually together in communion as a faith community here at St. Anne. Uh, please continue to keep uh, all of us uh, together uh, in our common prayer. Don't forget that uh, we will be live streaming Sunday Mass this coming Sunday at 9 a.m. Uh, so be a part of that. Invite others to be a part of it as well as we commend this most uh, serious and challenging moment in the story of our human family to God's protective care and to St. Joseph's intercession that healing and help will come to all. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and to serve the Lord.